My name is Michael Ostroff, and I'm researching vacuum general relativity, or GR for short. So it's commonly assumed that general relativity is just an effective theory which is going to get replaced by something else. So, but I'm not entirely sure that this is true. It seems to me that general relativity has a lot of bizarre features that have gone completely unnoticed by the scientific community. Um, and I'd like to bring light to some of them. In order to showcase that general relativity has some extremely like peculiar properties which have gone unnoticed, I'm going to start off with what is an extremely simple um, example of them, which I refer to as metric ambiguity. Metric ambiguity is essentially um, showing that the metric tensor in general relativity is a massless spin to gauge field, which means at any given point, you can't really gain any information about the metric tensor. You only are able to see how it changes, because how it changes determines what the levi civita connection is, and the connection is what's actually physical. In general relativity, and well, I guess differential geometry in general, there's this thing called parallel transport. And you can parallel transport um, a tensor, in this case, a rank two fully covariant tensor, around and you can do it in a path and if you're able if you're able to do this in like a closed loop and it returns to its initial um starting point then the its parallel transport is path independent and if like so for the metric tensor if you're using the levi civita connection which has zero torsion this will automatically be the case so long as space time is single valued and it's not multi-valued i.e it does not have any branch cuts so you can plug it into this equation and it will tell you essentially what the gradient of the metric tensor is at a given point, which is essentially um, the partial derivative of the metric tensor in each direction. And using that um, gradient of the metric tensor, that tells you how it changes as you move it in like all those directions. So if someone were to give you a levi civita connection field, um, for like a given like space-time like manifold thing and they did not give you a metric tensor you might be wondering what metric tensor goes with like created that um, levi civita connection field and so knowing what you know about the um, parallel transport of the metric tensor and its path independence you would plug it into this equation like after you like guess it at, a, like, at some origin and then you would parallel transport it to every other point. And in order to check that this is valid, you would plug it into the equation for the levi civita connection and verify that it gives you the exact same connection, which it always will. And so using so that, you'll notice that your initial starting guess gives the same levi civita connection, but you can change that starting guess to whatever you want and the connect, like resulting field that you're getting out of it will always be the same. It'll always give you the same levi civita connection field. And it's, you, you can also change how many like time dimensions. So like you might initially have started with like one time dimension, three spatial dimensions, but you can change like the amount of time dimensions in the metric tensor at a point by flipping like the eigenvalues from positive to negative. And so you could now have two time dimensions and two spatial dimensions and do the same parallel transport of the metric tensor. And the resulting like levi civita connection field, that's going to be completely identical. It doesn't really care. So you could go back to one time dimension, but instead of having it like point in this direction, maybe you have that time dimension pointing in this direction. And this changes like what the light cones are, or because before the light cones were like um, this essentially, but now, well, okay, I guess they're like, um, it's hard to visualize with like 2D, but like, you know, like cone, it's like this, like normally in this like time dimension, this is like the X and Y, but like instead you could imagine like rotating it and like transforming it and stuff like that. Um, light cones in general relativity are usually used um, to think like, to talk about causality and how um, like past flows into present and all that sort of stuff. So, if you're using the metric tensor to define like causality in like space and time, which you shouldn't because it's a gauge field, um, then you'll essentially be able to like randomly, you can just change the amount of time dimensions to 
whatever amount that you want and you can arbitrarily rotate the light cone to point in whichever directions you want and basically if you do this then like the concept of like space and time at least like the metric defined versions of those concepts they essentially immediately collapse because it becomes clear that the metric tensor is a massless spin to gauge field so obviously when we look around like the world around us when we look at the world around us we see that there's three spatial dimensions and everything evolves as we go forwards in time so what like obviously this um doesn't disprove any of that so it just proves that the metric tensor um oh i should make i should say something real quick in the metric ten or in general relativity you define distances um as follows if you have a vector of like a certain length um certain values you can um, multiply it by itself using the metric tensor to like define the dot product and then you have the length squared of that vector and if you were to take the square root of that then that would be what the length of the vector is so because the metric tensor is a gauge field um, you can take a vector at any given point in space-time, change the local metric tensor there to any values that you want, and you can make that um, vector have any conceivable lengths that you wish. Like, it can take on any value whatsoever. Um, so the concept of, the metric-based concept of lengths um, also collapses. Um, and, oh yeah, geodesics still work perfectly fine because those only, like, care about the connection. And you could have a geodetic interval, which is basically a geodesic of like a certain length. And following from that vector related stuff, you can change the length of that geodetic interval to whatever you want. So, and like those are also used to define proper time in GR. So that also becomes like a meaningless concept. I should like um, mention how this is actually like physical and like kind of observable in a way. Or unobservable, um, might not, I don't know the right word in this case. There's this thing called Kaluza Klein theory, and that's basically general relativity, but um, instead, like usually instead, it's like five dimensional, but the fifth dimension has been curled into a circle like this. Um, yeah, this gives rise to electromagnetism, and um, and like there, in Kaluza Klein theory, there are these things called Kaluza Klein solitons. And essentially, space time you know, can be like knotted in like with itself to create these um, topological solitons of vacuum space time. And these behave like particles do. And so you could imagine creating a machine out of them. And like maybe that machine is like doing some work over time. Maybe it's um, doing some calculations. Maybe it's observing the world around it. And um, it's like acting as like an observer, a potentially a conscious observer. And it's going to like, regardless of the, what like the like metric signature or the metric or the metric tensor is, like how many space and time dimensions and which direction the light cone's pointing in, it's not going to be sensitive to that. That machine is going to keep working independently of however your metric tensors, like whatever its values are locally. So it will have its own concept of time defined in ways I don't really quite understand. And it's not, like I said, it's not going to be sensitive to whatever the local values of the metric tensor are. So in general relativity, it's known that you can take a metric tensor field and you can multiply it by a scalar to essentially go and resize it. So what well, might initially have a dense distance or lengths of like one meter could now have lengths of like 10 meters or like a nanometer or something like that. And that because it doesn't change the connection, like the um, Levi-Civita connection, it will not change what the um, Ricci curvature is. So if it was a valid vacuum solution prior, it will still be a, a valid vacuum solution afterwards. So that's why you can take the solutions to like curve black holes and just resize them and scale them up however much you want and everything works out perfectly fine. This is um, a known ambiguity of the metric tensor in general relativity. 
you can like just do this like conformal rescaling without issue. And that is like um, one degree of like known metric amb of what's like known already in terms of like the metric ambiguity. However, the metric tensor, because it's symmetric and it's like a rank two tensor, it has n times n plus one divided by two unique components. And metric ambiguity um, essentially shows that each of those components are is essentially its own degree of freedom. This essentially showcases that the metric is far more ambiguous than we had previously had thought. So because we can change the amount of time dimensions, um, usually in JR we only have one time dimension, and therefore we don't have any closed time-like curves. But if we had have multiple time dimensions, then you can now go in a closed loop um, in like um, along time-like trajectories and return to your starting point. So if you can you can take any like normal space-time, Lorentzian space-time in general relativity, and add closed time-like curves to it, and nothing will go wrong essentially because like of the metric ambiguity because you're not changing anything. Because the negative eigenvalues of the metric tensor don't actually determine what is actually time-like or not, because the metric tensor is a gauge field, these aren't actual closed time-like curves. I don't know exactly what gives rise to like um, the discrepancy between time and space in general relativity, but it's not um, the metric tensor, or it's not its eigenvalues. When most physicists say space-time is doomed, they mean something like very different than this. However, I feel that this is the way in which like space-time would actually go and collapse and break down, because our metric defined notions of space, time, distance, and even causality essentially have collapsed now. And we need something to essentially go and replace these concepts that we can build up to. Um, so that we can reintroduce these concepts on a higher level, the higher level that we are ourselves are operating on, the level of like stars and galaxies and ducks, like that kind of stuff. I hope this has shown you all that 1915's vacuum GR is a lot more peculiar than we've all been led to believe. And I will be investigating this further, and if you would like to stay up to date on my research, um, I have a Substack account, Michael Ostroff Perpetual Science, and I will be regularly posting general relativity stuff on there. Next time, I will be talking about a little-known class of complex manifolds, one which is essentially in the analytic continuation of real analytic manifolds, and a like a new um, ver a new manifold which I have discovered which I'm dubbing the complex S1, or one sphere, which has some interesting properties. See you all next time.